Hello and welcome to this video on whether you should use listwise deletion when you run statistical analyses. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I provide weekly statistics tutorials, typically related to structural equation models and other multivariate methods. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. And also don't forget to hit the like button. One of the questions that I get very frequently from people who work with quantitative data and run statistical analyses is, can I use listwise deletion? Should I use listwise deletion? Or what other method should I use to address missing data? Missing data are very, very common when we run quantitative analyses. People leave out questions in longitudinal studies. People drop out over time. They simply move away or they're no longer interested in participating in a study and so forth. So we typically have at least some missing data in our studies. And then we all grew up kind of with simple statistical packages like SPSS, where SPSS makes it very easy for you to just simply run an analysis with listwise deletion of cases where many for many analyses for example in spss this is the default where simply all cases get dropped that have a missing score on at least one variable in the analysis or something like pairwise deletion is used by default and so many people including myself kind of grew up with this um, idea that that's okay to do that you just simply delete cases that have missing scores, thus getting rid of the problem very easily and just running complete case analysis in statistics. And we may not even have realized any issues that come from that until maybe a little bit later. So for me, that was definitely the case. As a student, I would just run SPSS and there would be listwise deletion. Okay, I'm losing cases, fine, here are my correlations. So, that's uh, that's how I kind of grew up. And then later on, I learned about the problems that um, this comes with. And it's actually something that is very serious and very problematic. And many people aren't aware of this. And this is why I wanted to make a video about this, kind of explaining a little bit in simple terms why listwise and pairwise deletion are a bad idea and um, why other modern methods for addressing missing data are much better and should be used. So one obvious problem when we use listwise deletion and also pairwise deletion is that we lose data. And this is something that most people understand quite easily that this is a problem because we know that sample size is related to precision of uh, estimating statistical parameters and it's related to statistical power. In other words, when you lose data, when your sample size gets reduced due to missing data, then your standard errors might get worse. They might get larger. The precision of your estimates goes down, meaning, for example, confidence, or this would be reflected in confidence intervals, for example, which are based on the standard errors. So the confidence intervals would be wider, reflecting the lack of precision in your estimates. And then <clears throat> maybe most importantly, tests of statistical significance, which um, we use so frequently, are affected by missing data because you miss out on statistical power. So you might run into problems of not finding that effects are significant because of a lack of statistical power. So you lose power when you throw data away, and this is something that is not desirable. But then second, and this is actually a problem that might be more serious and that many people aren't aware of, you're making assumptions about the missing data mechanism when you run something like listwise deletion analysis or pairwise deletion analysis. And that is you're assuming a very strict mechanism of missing completely at random data, meaning that the missing uh, missingness is completely unrelated, is completely random, completely unrelated to the variables in your data set. And this is something that is uh, a very strong assumption compared to other assumptions that we might make about missing data. And so when this assumption is not met, meaning when missingness is related to um, variables in your data set, then you might end up with biased results. So 
Listwise deletion can also cause bias because it makes a very strong assumption about the missing data mechanism. And this is something that many people don't have a good understanding of that there are other procedures for handling missing data that rely on less strict assumptions. So we, where we run a lower risk of ending up with biased statistical results. Many people think that when we do something like multiple imputation, for example, that this, that means cheating. So we're, we're getting something, we're imputing values into the data set that are not really there and that this is kind of fake data or fabricated data and that therefore we shouldn't do this and we should simply throw missing data away. The truth is that things like multiple imputation and full information maximum likelihood estimation are mathematically sound methods for addressing missing data that make less restrictive assumptions than procedures like listwise deletion and are therefore less problematic. So what you get is when you run more modern methods to handle missing data, such as multiple imputation or full information maximum likelihood estimation, you get more power because your sample size, the reduction in your sample size or the effect of the missing data on power are um, minimized. They're not completely eliminated, but they're often minimized. You can have a lot of power still when you impute data or when you use full information, maximum likelihood estimation. So that problem is addressed. And then also the issue of bias is also addressed in some way, at least in a better way than by using listwise or pairwise deletion, because procedures such as multiple imputation and full information, maximum likelihood estimation only rely on the assumption of missing at random data, not missing completely at random data. Missing at random means that missingness can be explained by variables in your data, either variables that are in your model, for example, in your regression model or predictor variables, for example, or by so-called auxiliary variables that are other variables unrelated to your model that are correlated with dropout or correlated with missingness and that can be included in the analysis. So in summary, the missing data mechanism that is assumed for procedures like multiple imputation and full information maximum likelihood is less restricted therefore more general. So these procedures provide unbiased results, even when data are only missing at random, not missing completely at random. They can also be used when missing, are, missing data are completely at random. So they are more flexible and they're less likely to result in a loss of power and in biased statistical estimates. I will make a separate video at some point about missing data mechanism, explaining that in more detail, but for now, so say the message here is that modern uh, missing data handling procedures rely on less strict assumptions than the traditional, so to say, methods such as listwise and pairwise deletion. In summary, you should not throw your data away. You should never use listwise deletion or pairwise deletion. It's never a good idea. Maybe sometimes when you have many, many cases and there are only a handful of missing scores, then maybe it doesn't really matter for the outcomes. But if you have more substantial missing data, then it is definitely not a good idea to throw your data away. You can check out my other videos on this channel about missing data analysis. They are linked here in the description. I have one video where I show how you can very easily run common statistical procedures such as multiple regression analysis of variance, t-test, correlation analysis within structural equation modeling software that is capable of full information maximum likelihood estimation. For example, the M plus software for structural equation modeling can also estimate regression analysis as a special case and ANOVA and so on. And it uses full information maximum likelihood estimation by default. So unlike SPSS, you don't even have to think about, oh, how could I handle missing data? How do I do multiple imputation? You just simply use the default, which is full information maximum likelihood estimation, and then you get um, all the data gets used that you have. And so that is one advantage of 
structural equation modeling software that it uses many of those programs use full information maximum likelihood estimation by default and you can try that out the demo version for example of m plus is free it can handle up to six variables so you could run a t-test or an ANOVA or a simple correlation analysis with m plus checking out um, those procedures full information maximum likelihood also multiple imputation is now very very easily done in programs such as m plus where um, it's made very convenient for the user to impute data and then analyze the data. You can even do everything in one step and the results will already be aggregated for you. So you'll get the pooled estimates in the output. You almost don't see that the analysis is based on imputed data sets. Also M plus makes it easy to add auxiliary variables into your model so that you can be um, more certain or that you can um, have more confidence that the results um, are in line with the missing at random data mechanism. And so that's all very convenient in modern programs that are capable of full information, maximum likelihood estimation and or multiple imputation. And you can check out the playlist that is linked in the description where I talk about how to do all these things in the M plus software. Also, please check out the description for additional videos and workshops. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button if you like this video and I'll see you next week.